finding smallmouth bass on or near the spawn is really as easy as finding good flats and you're looking for flats that have hard bottom, sand, gravel, and rock. And what we do to identify the best places to find and catch fish on those flats is, first of all, on our hummingbird, we'll set the chart to, say, uh, depth water highlight in an area of, say, six to eight feet of water. That's the zone that we want to look at. When I select that uh, through my Lake Master chip, I'll see the, line, the contour lines between six and eight feet, and they pop out at you in bright green. And then we just take our mercury and we drive around just zigzagging over these flats, looking with our eyes to see if we can see good rocks and sand transitions, as well as using the side imaging technology to shoot off to the sides with sonar, and we're able to identify where those high spots are with rocks. That's the best way to go about doing it. It's better than going out and just starting to cast and bomb cast flats because you'll waste a lot of time fishing dead water. You can see right there, off to our right now, We've got a lot of, these are scattered rocks, smaller rocks, some bigger rocks. You can see there's a little high spot off to the side here. This is just mostly nothing sand, sand over here, but this is all that good rock. You can see it's right on one of our waypoints too. Look at that, that's so cool. You know what I, I like to do on the side imaging anyway is I like to set it up to a smaller scale, so you can you can scan quite a distance with this, but I like to run it around 50 to 75 feet. And what that does is it makes the space that you're looking at, that 60 feet, appears bigger. So if you could imagine if you were looking at, say, 120 feet, that 120 feet is compressed into the same space, so everything is smaller. When you cut that distance down to, say, 60 feet, you get a lot bigger picture and a lot more detail on the screen than you do running a long ways away. So I just personally, that's, that's the way I like to do it. 50 to 75 feet for me is the zone that I really like to look at. You get a lot of detail that way. There we go. Oh, cast into the sand patches? Just kind of, yeah, just actually cast into the dark patches. Look at that. Finally putting it together, nice. God, they are fun. This water is so clear. It's been infested with zebra mussels, and the color of the water has changed dramatically in the last couple of years. It's really quite amazing. You're in 10, 12 feet of water, and you're just staring at the bottom. It's like he kind of got wrapped up in it. Kind of funny. There we go. Come here. Come here, Mr. Brownie. Oh, you want to give me a little leap? There you go. Another nice fish. Another nice fish. We've been experimenting, looking for fish with uh, a soft plastic minnow, the drop dead minnow, to try and locate some of these fish and they're really not being that cooperative. We're seeing a lot more with our eyes and you would think that the in, under these conditions we get a lot of fish chasing that, but really what it is is they just want something really, really, really slow and on the bottom. Really slow and on the bottom. Seems like a lot of times if you play with both ends of the spectrum, sp speed going really, really fast and really erratic and then really slow, just dead sticking. Those are two really keys, key presentation styles to figure out what exactly the fish, fish preferred. Today it really seems like the do nothing, lay it on the bottom and let it sit is about as good as it gets.